The human brain. It alone is responsible for every action we take on a daily basis. And in the quest to understand exactly how it works, the field of neuroimaging is quickly stepping out of the fringe and into the mainstream. Ten years ago, no one would have thought it was possible. Now there are four or five different universities who's doing studies in this particular neuroimaging, especially in the brain. But neuroimaging is delivering more than just studies of the brain. In fact, some impressive results have already been made. There's a lot of work on what's called mind-machine interface, which is literally uh, you controlling robotic limbs with your mind. And this isn't some you know, way-out project that's going to happen 20 or 30 years from now. Today, scientists at Duke have got um, monkeys that can control robotic limbs. In fact, even in control entire robotic bodies. It's happening right now, today. In addition... Scientists hope to one day be able to communicate with those who would have previously been labeled brain dead. People are in a vegetative state. They're now taking what is an MRI, and they're adding it to watch and figure out in the brain what's active. So people in comas can be communicated with either by a fragrance or by a neurotransmitted frequency. With neuroimaging, fringe scientists are better understanding how the human brain works and hope to one day unlock its seemingly limitless potential. The unseen power of the human brain. It contains some 100 billion neurons and is capable of processing almost incalculable instructions per second. It is these seemingly limitless possibilities that have led some fringe scientists to believe that humans are capable of telekinesis or the ability to move objects with one's mind. We're now moving into a conscious perspective about what was once called the pseudosciences, the ability to move objects without ever touching it. And once again, is that possible? Absolutely. You can move an object by finding the same frequency that object is functioning in. The mind is a powerful, powerful tool. Although many purported incidents of telekinesis have been debunked, the case of Nina Kulagina remains a mystery. The Soviet housewife was the subject of much study in the USSR during the 1960s and 70s, and on one occasion, she reportedly stopped the heart of a frog with her mental powers. Many supporters of telekinesis point to the fact that atoms, the building block of all things around us, are mostly empty space and therefore could easily be manipulated by something as powerful as the brain. There's a lot of charlatans and there's a lot of liars, but it doesn't affect the fact that the mind is as powerful enough to move 94.6% of a physical object and never even be bothering with the 5% as the physical composition of matter. Proof of this amazing power could be difficult to come by, but perhaps someday fringe science will finally unlock the mystery of telekinesis. The Mysteries of Human Consciousness they're what drive fringe scientists to study all aspects of the human brain, including the possibility of communicating with the dead. Well, it's absolutely possible to communicate with dead people. We have mediums, which are pseudosciences, but we also have Rupert Sheldrake and the energetic morphic fields. Rupert Sheldrake's morphic fields theory contends that all organisms are surrounded by an unseen aura that exists even after death. The Harvard and Cambridge educated biologist has been testing his hypothesis for some 30 years. This is the coming science. It is very possible to communicate with someone who has passed from this world to the next. If these morphic fields indeed exist, they may explain the various ways in which ghost hunters electronically communicate with the dead. Amazingly, this idea of tuning into the spirit world has been around from the very beginnings of technology. Thomas Edison was fixated in knowing that heaven was just a frequency. And he knew that one day he was going to create a device, and it was an obsession he had his entire life. I believe when we go from analog transmissions to digital in 2009, the realization within the next three or to five years of Edison's machine that will communicate 
with this world and worlds beyond will not be fringe. It will be a reality. And for those who would be skeptical of such an amazing breakthrough, there's this warning. We must pay close attention to the possibility of not only can you never get away from your mother, she can come back from the grave to make sure you clean up your act. Science often deals in large theories and even larger experiments, but one facet of fringe science focuses on matter so small it can't be seen with the naked eye. Nanotechnology is the new science. Other than electronics, nanotechnology will lead the world in where fringe is and where fringe can go. That what you can construct on the head of a pen can heal a body, save a heart or a liver. This is fringe being manifested at its best. Indeed, nanotechnology is used extensively in the field of medicine to create new and innovative drug therapies, but it's also utilized in thousands of other applications. But dealing on an atomic level hasn't always been used for beneficial means. It's never first started about health, it's about war. Most of the fringe sciences that moved forward, one was called the splitting of an atom. That became the atom bomb, which became a hydrogen bomb, which became a thermonuclear bomb. All that was fringe science in the 40s. And even when nanotechnology is used for good, there are those who worry about the results of affecting nature on a molecular level and wonder if such tinkering could ultimately do more harm than good. However, with nanotechnology producing such incredible breakthroughs, it seems clear that mankind is willing to take the risk.